was, sir. You bet he is. Let's go down and surprise him. He'll be glad to see us after all these years. All right. Hey, Cliff! Cliff Jordan! Gary McGee! Where did you come from? I live here. We just saw your show. Cliff, you're still top. Oh, uh, that's because you quit the racket. You remember Mary. Mary! Oh, hello, Cliff. You're just as pretty as ever. Jerry and I are married now. Oh, well, congratulations. You couldn't have picked a better guy. That's what I figured. Cliff, I want you to know Jane Chandler and Pete Simmons. Hello, Jane. How are you, hello. Pete? Sure, a swell show you put on, Mr. Jordan. Terrific. Thanks. How about all of us having dinner together? On me. Oh, wait a minute. Well, then it's all set. I'll meet you in the parking station as soon as I get cleaned up. Same old Cliff. Always looking for an excuse to celebrate. That's me. Live high, die young, have fun while it lasts. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave a knocking. Where did you get so formal? What do you want? That's 200 bucks you owe me? I'll pay you off when we get to Ferndale. We ought to have a sell out there. Look, Joe, I want that dough and no excuse. I'm flat broke. Here, take that on account. Five bucks. Where's that gonna get me? No, I can spare. Anyhow, you'd only blow it on some dame. Joe, I want that dough and I'm going to take it. You're fired. Get out. Get out. It's all right with me. I've got some people waiting for me. But I'll be back tomorrow and you better have that dough. Five bucks. Sir. Reservations? <laughs> That's for the Indians, guess, huh? For the Indians? Oh, yes, for the Indians. Keep it. Here you are, sir. Right around there, Mary. Yes. There, young lady. There you are. I'll meet the phone after. I'll leave this to you, Gaston. And the best in his wine. Yes, sir. Everything to me. Cigarette, anybody? No, thanks. No. I don't know how you do it. All I ever get is something behind a post. Yeah, <laughs> take care of him, Jerry. The do re mi, it talks. You must be doing much better than you used to be. Oh, I'm doing all right. There wouldn't be any show without me. I guess not. You always did put on a good show. Great <laughs> success. I've always wanted to order, but I never had the nerve. Nice dessert if you can get the old brandy. Uh, coffee all around in the check, please. Yeah. How do you like working for Jerry? Uh, Simon Legree, huh? Oh, well, no, darling. Old? <laughs> How do you like that? Jerry's my age. Old. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. She just meant that you and Jerry aren't kids anymore. Where's your show going from here, Mr. Jordan? Ferndale, then north to Placerville, Reno. You know, I sure am. It must be an exciting life. A lot more so than driving a truck. You're learning the business, aren't you? Someday you'll take your father's place as, as general manager. Or would you rather be a gasoline trap? Oh, no. Wait a minute, Mary. Cliff is no gasoline trap. He's a star attraction. Jerry likes the trucking business. I like hell driving. We're both in the business that we like. Now, you take Pete for instance. Oh, oh I'm sorry. It's clumsy, aren't I? Better wash this off with water, will you? Excuse me? Thank you. What's the idea? Did you pay that check? Forget it. Your turn next time. You got cleaned up all right? Best I could. Dumb trick, was it? You took so long, we thought you'd set them out to be dry clean. <laughs> Don't forget, you're coming up to visit me tomorrow at the office. Don't worry, I'll be there. The kids certainly seem to enjoy meeting Cliff. He's like a shot in the arm, isn't he? You know, Jerry, for a grown-up, you act like a kid yourself. What do you mean? Don't tell me you're not wise to that gag that Cliff pulled, getting you to pay the check. He had no intention of paying it. That's why he spilled the coffee on himself deliberately. Oh, oh, come on, Mary. Cliff wouldn't do that. Not much. That's me. Live high, die young, have fun while it lasts. 
sure at somebody else's expense. Hi, you Cliff. Glad you could make it. Pretty snug, Jerry. You look very impressive behind that desk. Well, don't tell anybody, but most of the time I keep my feet on it. Yeah, so I've noticed. Come on, let's take a look at the place. All right. I got a sweet setup here. I want to show you around a little bit. At the end of the hall there is our office where the shipments are raided and the freight bills are made up. And that's our loading dock. Nicely put together, huh? You can say that again. Look at that layout. All nice and streamlined. She certainly is. She? Yeah, the layout. That's our dispatch office. The dispatch office, that's what I want to see. Where's Jane? Well, you'll either have to shorten this blackboard or get a taller girl. She spit something. Stretchy. <laughs> Kangaroo, I want you to know an old buddy of mine, Cliff Jordan. Hello, Kangaroo. So you're Cliff Jordan. Seems like I've known you a long time. How come? Well, so I can't work around Jerry here without hearing something about his old pal, Cliff Jordan. <laughs> Thinking of joining us? <laughs> What's so funny about that? Cliff joining our outfit. He's the star of a big stunt racing show. I can just see the manager's face if I told him I was quitting. It would practically ruin the show. Well, maybe so. But I had a hunch you might like it here, Jerry being your pal and all. No, you don't know Cliff. I can no more visualize him settling down to a steady job driving a truck. Well, I don't see why not. You did it, and you did all right. Yeah, but you don't know Cliff. Oh, I get it. You think I'm too rattlebrained to settle down to a job and keep it, huh? Well, I didn't say that. No, but that's what you think. You know, maybe Kangaroo has something. Oh, I'm doing all right now. But how long can a guy keep going without getting his neck broken? I might even like driving a truck. You're not serious. I certainly am. Be swell being together again, you and me. Why not? Yeah, sure, but... All right, you talk me into it. First, you'll have to go to the company's headquarters and pass a few tests. Are you kidding? Me take a driving test? Driving one of our rigs is a little different from handling a stripped-down racer, Cliff. There's quite a trick to it. Such as? No, thanks. Two gear shifts, 15 speeds, three different braking systems. Sounds like a good idea. When do I start? I'll give you a note to our general manager, Al Simmons. That's Pete's father. Hmm. He'll put you through the mill. You know, physical examination, ICC quizzes, the works. Seems to me it's a waste of time. All right, give me the note. Is that one of your train drivers? What's the matter with Pusher? Jumpy, I guess. Maybe he didn't get his eight hours rest. Yeah, it looks like he didn't. I better talk to him. You see, Cliff, it's nice to see It's nice to see you again, Cliff. You're going to see a lot more of me. Hey, Cliff, if you want that note, you better come back in here. I'll see you when I get out of school. Did you see in problem 23? One stop the railroad and one stop the crosswalk in case there are people in. What's the top speed you can make on an open highway? 50 miles an hour except downhill around a curve or through a town.
Well, you're not driving a racing car. Oh, come in, come in. Do uh, you mind closing the door, please? Sit down, Jordan. Thank you, sir. You have a better than passing grade here, Jordan, but uh, your chart shows a tendency toward reckless driving. Yes, sir. That was all right in your former profession, but we don't tolerate it with National Express. I can understand that, sir. The truck driver today is not a sloppy, hard-drinking, tough guy with a chip on his shoulder. <laughs> What's going on here? He tried to tear down the fence and me with it. He's crazy. He just comes along and pulls me off of the cab. Did you get your eight hours rest? Yeah, sure. It looks to me like you didn't. I've warned you about this before, Pusher. You're not driving our rig with a hangover. There's nothing wrong with me. Get under the bags and sleep it off. Hey, what about my rig? Nothing about it. You want to keep on working for us, you're going to be a grease monkey. After I got my diploma, Mr. Simmons said to me, the men who drive our trucks must be gentlemen. <laughs> I knew there was a catch in it somewhere when he let me get by. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> I should have fired him, but the guy's got about six kids. He's always in hot. Soft car to Jerry, huh? Jane, take work's name off the board. Who goes in his place? What about me? I passed all the tests, didn't I? All right, put Jordan down for a student trip. See you later. No, 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 no. Let, uh, let, let me do that. You can't stand the strain. Told you I'd see you after school. Well, here I am. So I see. You got your diploma. With honors. What goes with him? Oh, he's always doing that. It's supposed to help his reflexes. Ben? Oh, they're a little slow. But don't ever accuse him of it. Sorry, about that. Huh? He was one of our best drivers till about a year ago. Then he had an accident that slowed him down, made him nervous. Isn't it dangerous for him to drive a truck? Oh, he doesn't drive a truck anymore. Jerry gives him odd jobs to do. But don't ever say anything about it to him. He keeps thinking maybe one day he'll get back on the run again. Seems like a nice guy. Oh, he is. Can't seem to get the hang of that barrel trick, and it's driving him crazy. Well, here I go on my first run. See you later. Wait a minute, Cliff. You heard Jerry. You're taking a student trip. Student trip? But yes, you take Kangaroo along up to Morgan's Point and back. He's your instructor. Come on. I'll get you an outfit. All right, let's go, Professor. Don't try to break any records. With you here? How can I fail? <laughs> Goes your rig, wise guy. You know why McGee turned it over to Jordan? Sure, you had a hangover. My foot. Because they're buddies, that's why. He was looking for a chance to make a job. Well, I guarantee you, Jordan ain't gonna enjoy driving my rig no how. Take it easy, relax. Who, me? I'm always relaxed. Yeah? If I relaxed anymore, I'd fall asleep. Ain't a nervous bone in my body. So get that speedometer, Cliff. You gotta learn to read the tachometer. And shift your gears accordingly. Okay. Here comes the grave. Shift. Percy! You got a real knack for split second time. If I didn't, I'd have been a dead cookie a long time ago. See, here's the real gadget right here, the tachograph. Yeah? Just right in here behind the clock. It's a round paper disc with a little chart light that keeps moving all the time with a pen marking it down in red ink. It's like one of those machines that record your heartbeat, huh? That's it. We call it a stool pigeon. Keeps a complete record of your trip. 
How fast you were going, how many stops you made, and how long you stopped. Records everything but the name of the blonde you've been romancing. Huh? <laughs> just about. But no kidding, that guy's just unbeatable. Now don't try to outsmart it. I learned a long time ago not to outsmart anything that doesn't breathe. <laughs> Charlie Blaine. Wouldn't have his job for a thousand bucks a week. Explosive? Yeah, carries the hashes for Maxton Chemical. They have to be kept at the freezing point in a reefer. A reefer? Refrigerator truck. The chemicals get hot. So long, Charlie. Well, I always say that if you're going to get it, you can break your neck in the bathtub. What do you say? Well, I say I'm going to lie down for a while. You're doing fine. The rest of the runs are straight away. Okay. Go ahead, get a rest. Yeah, no, don't try anything foolish. I'll be watching you. Don't worry, I'll follow the rules. Slow down around the curves. Don't pick up any hitchhikers. Check my tires every 50 miles or so. The soft tire always catches fire. Oh, yes. And don't run downhill out of gear. Bearings are shot. Can you notify my station back in Morgan's Point to send for a tow truck? Yeah, sure. Driver, driver, my baby's sick. Please take us in town. I'm sorry, lady. Against the rule to pick up hitchhikers. But he might die out here. Please take us. I'm sorry, lady. All right, get in. Don't forget my tow truck. Okay. What's the matter with him? I wish I knew. He's been acting like this for hours. I'll get him to a doctor as fast as I can. Already broken two rules, I might as well break another one. This rig certainly rolls out of gear, doesn't it? Better slow down, Cliff. Yeah, but the baby is sick. I've got to get him to a doctor right away. Why? Because he's fallen. Maybe all he needs is to be burped. Oh, oh no, it's something serious. To find what do you know about babies? An awful lot. I was one myself once. And I got a couple of my own. Here. Let me have it. Come on, son. Come on, fella. Right up here. That's a place. There we are. There we are. Did you hear that? Right from East Coast. There we are. That's a boy. Thank you, Mother. Mm -hmm. Now watch him stop crying. There, that's all it was to it. Now put it in gear and slow down. I suppose this speed will show on the tool pitcher, huh? There's no doubt about it. There's going to be trouble when Jerry reads that chart. Well, you sure made a fine start. I told you the kid was sick. It got well in a hurry. Well, you should have seen the way the mother was acting. I don't know, but she wasn't bad looking either. Oh, there's no use arguing. The chart shows you were doing over 70. Yeah, I can't deny that. I'm sorry, Cliff. I'll have to send this to headquarters with a report that you picked up two passengers and exceeded speed limits. Send Kangaroo in, will you? Say, Jerry. You're not going to report this to Simmons, are you? Why not? Oh, well, Cliff was in a spot on it. I want to write a report. Huh? He's buried in the files. Oh, Don't tell Cliff. He needs a lesson. He's got to obey company rules. Ah, oh, you're a great guy, Jerry. You know, I thought I was partly to blame about the thing. I... All right, get back on the rig with Cliff, and this time stay awake. Well, I would have stayed awake, but, uh... That's all. How's she rolling? Like a kitty car.
That guy gripes me. He's turning out to be one of our best drivers. Says you. In your kitty car. Come on, let's look her over. Hi, you beautiful. Hello, Cliff. Chalk up another run stappy, will you? Here, make out your report. You'll do it. No accidents, no trouble on time. May we at least have your autograph? All right, but it'll cost you. How about dinner tonight? Not tonight. Pete's due in. Tomorrow night. Pete's day off. Oh, Pete doesn't even drive behind the ears yet. What do you see in him? Hidden talent. Why don't you give yourself a break? You're not married yet. And go out with you? Yeah. Uh-uh. Pete wouldn't like it. What does he expect you to do? Sit home and knit while he's out on the run? Sign here, please. All right. What do you say? I'll think about it. All right. What do you think of Cliff now? He said he'd settle down, and he did. I'll believe that next year. What have you got against him, anyway? Everything before he settled down. That's ancient history, Mary. Give the guy a chance. See you later. Have a cup of coffee, Cliff? No, thanks. Hey, that's about your fifth cup, isn't it? Well, I like it. It puts Moxie in my system. Well, boy, am I lucky to be here and breathing. How's that? Oh, I skidded in the fog. It's down at the bottom of Crone Hill. I couldn't see anything. Lucky I was going in the right direction. Now, you fellas beef about a little fog. You should have driven the rigs I did in the old days. Dim lights, smooth tires, no brakes. If you wanted to stop, you had to throw out an anchor. Why, now, rigs are as safe as being in bed. Mm, you can say that again. After those hell cars driving these trucks is like pushing a baby carriage. Okay, okay, you guys. I'm sorry I opened my mouth. Oh, kangaroo was only kidding. Cliff taking this one out? Yeah, it's on his schedule. over at Morgan's Point to uh, give it a play. you get the usual discount. Yeah, but don't change cooks on us when the tourists start coming, Pop. <laughs> well, I didn't do it here, did I? Anyway, the entire crew stays here. My boy's gonna run the new place. Maybe you ought to change waitresses. Since Cliff's been on this run, Molly don't get around like she used to. <laughs> <laughs> so to prove my point, I give her the gun. I hit the ramp doing 90 miles an hour. I do a complete somersault and almost hit the other side. And believe it or not, before I hit the ground, I do another somersault and land right on the wheel. Oh, really? Hey, Cliff, ain't you working? Look at the time. Holy smokes, Molly, you make a guy forget he's got a schedule or a job. See you later. Bye. Better check those tires, Cliff. No time, Charlie. Next stop.
To a spare, I wonder. I don't know. Maybe he lost in the crap game. Chances are they were waiting with the truck. Saw me go into coffee stop and went to work. Did you notify the sheriff's office? No, I thought I'd better report to you first. Yes, sir. Come in, please. Bring your notebook. Better give Jane all the facts. Jane, first gonna dictate a report on a stolen tire. Make enough copies for headquarters, highway patrol, the sheriff's office, and our files. Go ahead, Cliff. About six o'clock last night, I went into uh, Pop's coffee shop. I was in there about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Yes, all right. I'll tell him. Goodbye. Will you sit down? What are you doing tonight, Janie? Going home. I see by the report that Pete's in Morgan's Point tonight. That's right. Don't, Cliff. Why don't you and I go dancing, huh? I'm afraid I can't make it. Are you and Pete secretly married? No. Engaged? No. Well, then why don't you give the guy a chance to know you better? Bring you home early. I have to go out at midnight. Oh, all right, Cliff. You're the most persistent man I ever saw. I'll pick you up in an hour. Hello, Mary. Hello. Where have you been keeping yourself? Cliff, why don't you leave her alone? Who? You know who I mean. She's Pete's girl. Oh, we're just going out to dinner, maybe dancing. Anything wrong with that? Jane's just a kid, and you're a pretty smooth guy. I should know I was a naive kid myself once. Oh, that was different then. I was younger myself then. Not ready to settle down. Now I am. You? <laughs> With what? With a wife and a home, like Jerry did. What are you going to use for money? Every time you get hold of a dollar, you toss it away. Always trying to be a big shot. You don't think I can save and plan a future, do you? Don't tell me you're serious about Jane. Well, I think she's a pretty cute kid, and I go for her. Is there anything wrong in my making a pitch for her? Yes, because you'll give her the air like you did with me after you bust her up with Pete. Oh? Cliff, she's not for you. Don't spoil what those two kids have. Mary, you're making something out of nothing. Hi, Mary. Hello, You've got that report ready for you to sign, Cliff. You're making her work overtime. See you later, Mary. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Time to change clothes and make the schedule. We certainly crowded those few hours, Cliff. A lot of fun, wasn't it? Oh, it was. Thanks, Cliff. Now, you promised. Okay, I was just testing. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Yeah, no trouble. Just routine. Wait a minute, Pete. Kind of anxious to see Jane, ain't you? Yeah, sure I am. Why? Ever figure maybe she ain't so anxious to see you? Meaning what, pusher? <laughs> I just can't watch her make a sap out of you, kid. All right, let's have it. Well, maybe you ought to know. Cliff's been taking her out. You're crazy. Am I? 
Ask her. Ask her where they went last night. <laughs> Hello, Pete. What's the matter? Were you out with Cliff last night? Oh, so that's it. Yes, I was out with him. I was going to tell you about it. I don't like it. Going out behind my back. What do you mean by that? I mean you wait until I'm out on a run and then you make a date. Well, that's a fine thing to say. If you don't trust me now, you never will. Oh, I'm sorry, Jane. I, look, it just hit me wrong. I, I'm sorry, too. I'm sorry you have such a suspicious mind. Any trouble with the trailer hitch when you drove the rig? Well, no, sir, not a bit of trouble. The mechanic looked it over when you brought the rig in. Well, the pusher Wilkes came right up after I got out of the cab. All right, I'm through with you, son. That's it. Tell Wilkes I want to see him. Send pusher in, please. Jane? Yes? You're not still sore at me, are you? Look, uh, I was thinking we might go to the baseball game tonight. It's Wednesday. Well, I started the date. Oh. Oh, well, if you've got a date with Cliff, that's a lot more important. Just forget it, huh?
You must have hit the top of that grade hard to drop that box. I know that grade, Mr. Simmons. It flattens out very sharply. It wasn't Cliff's fault. Well, whose fault is it? According to the evidence, the pin didn't break off. The trailer hitch wasn't properly fastened. You sent for me? Yes. Mr. Simmons, you know Pusher Wilkes. Yeah. Wilkes, did you check the hitch on the rig Jordan drove today? Yes, sir. Notice anything wrong with it? No, sir. If I did, I'd have reported it. You're sure the hitch was secure? Positive. Then how do you explain Jordan dropping that box? He must have hit the top of the grade too hard. It's pretty tricky. You've got to ease up to it. I did ease up to it. I've driven that grade enough times to know how to take it. Then what's your theory? It wasn't properly hit. Now, wait a minute, Jordan. You're accusing me of passing a faulty hitch. It's the only way I could have lost the trailer. That's a pretty serious accusation, Jordan. Can you back it up? He's been sore at me ever since I took over his rig. That's a lie. I've been doing my work right, not cheating like you. What kind of a crack is that? Well, I wasn't going to say anything about it, but Jordan wants to blame me for something I've never done. I can tell about something he did do. If you got something to say, say it. That, that tire he said was swiped, it never was. That tire burned up, and he ditched it someplace. How do you know that? When he brought the rig back, there were scorch marks under the trailer. Is that the truth, Jordan? Why wouldn't Jordan report a fire? Because he never tested his tires, that's why. He was late getting into Morgan's Point that night. Well, what about that, Jordan? That's right, the tire did catch fire. I changed it. I didn't want any more black marks against me, so I ditched it. All because you didn't test your tires. Well, I got to talking in the coffee shop, and I was late. Well, it's in your hands now, Jerry. You know what to do. Okay, Pusher, that's all. Well, that was sure a fine trick you pulled. Well, I guess I was trying too hard, Jerry. Well, you didn't have to lie to me, Cliff. No, I just wanted to show you that I could settle down and hold a job. But it backfired on me. <laughs> Shall I pack my gear? Wait a minute. I'll have to charge you the price of the wheel and the tire. Or maybe someone will stand for me putting you on probation. You're giving me another chance? If I can work it. I don't know, Cliff. You're just like an irresponsible kid. But I think you're serious about trying to make good around here. Believe it or not, Jerry, I want to settle down here for good and well, maybe get married. Married? You? Have you got the girl picked out? Oh, so that's why you spent so much time at Pop's Coffee Stop. Pop always did have good-looking waitresses. Now, wait a minute. Well, remember this much. It's your last chance. If anything else happens, I can't front for you. Don't you worry, Jerry. Nothing will happen again. Believe me. Simmons coming for dinner? No, I had to get back to headquarters. What did he decide about Cliff? We're giving him another chance. We? I'll bet you decided that. A glutton for punishment, aren't you? What have you got against Cliff? Oh, he's always meant trouble. You know, I used to go with him before we were married. Yeah, I remember. You didn't marry me just because Cliff walked out on you, did you? Don't be ridiculous. Well, if Cliff's the rat you seem to think he is, you won't have to worry about him much longer. What? He's on probation. It's a sense he'll do something wrong again. Say, Jerry sure likes you. Giving you another chance. Yeah, they don't come any better than Jerry. You know that it wasn't my fault I dropped that box, don't you? I know darn well it wasn't your driving. I taught you, didn't I? That burnt tire. It's kind of funny that it got soft so soon. Yeah, it does. Maybe somebody's got in for you. It isn't hard to get through. Well, pull up, Cliff. Now we'll be here for a while. It sure feels good to get behind the wheel again. I wish Jerry would give me a regular run. Yeah, why doesn't he? Oh, he's got some bug about my reflexes. In the old days, when the going was really tough, I used to drive 12 and 15 hours a stretch. And now that it's as safe as roller skating, except as I said before, if you're driving one of those reefers full of chemicals like Charlie up there.
I must be losing my touch. What? Things must be tough. I haven't been able to get you to smile all evening. Oh, I'm sorry, Cliff, for being such a wet blanket. Oh, I was only kidding. As a matter of fact, I've had a lot of fun the last couple of hours just being with you. Half the time, I don't know whether you're just kidding or being serious. Oh, I know what you mean. But maybe a guy can change if he has a reason like I have. I don't quite follow you, Cliff. Well, you see, before it didn't make any difference whether I had a job or not. But ever since Jerry gave me a second chance this morning, well, it's made a lot of difference. I know now that I have to make good. Well, for you. Me? Yeah, I know I'm a little older than you are, and I haven't much to offer, but I know this much I'd work awful hard trying to make you happy. If you'd have me. I never gave it a thought. Oh, I know I'm rushing you a little bit, but when you've been around as much as I have, well, if you see something you like, you know it right away. Oh, Cliff, you're nice. And I like you, but I... Well, think about it, Jane. Think about it fast, will you? Oh, aren't you taking the first run in the morning? Oh, always the business woman. <laughs> I can see the kind of a future I'm going to have. I'll drive you home. But, Mr. McGee, I've already made arrangements to get a new truck and a man to take Charlie's place. Well, then... Well, but they won't be here for a few days. Meanwhile, I've got to get the chemicals from the warehouse here to my plant in Morgan's Point. I'm afraid we can't help you out about it, Mr. Maxton. Well, you're the only line can carry them for me. You've got refrigerator trailers. Yes, but we don't have a license to carry explosives or chemicals. I'm sorry, I'm afraid our company can't take the risk. I'll pay $500 to have those chemicals delivered. That's a lot of money, but we can't do it. I'll lose a big rush order. Before my truck is ready, it'll be too late. There's no use talking about it. I'm very sorry. Maybe I can help you, uh, Mr. Maxton. Yeah? Let's have a cup of coffee. Hello, Mr. Maxton. This is Cliff Jordan. I checked my schedule and I'm driving a reefer, all right. Good. Will there be an upper room? Yeah, plenty of room. It's only half loaded. How can you get the acid here? In a pickup truck. It'll have to be split-second timing. We can't let it get above freezing point very long. All right, have it here at 7.30 sharp. There won't be anybody around. We can load it right away. Right. just as reliable as Joe here. I'll be pulling out of here in 15 minutes. Right. I'll be seeing you. Hello, honey. You waiting for me? I'm waiting for Jerry. We're trying to finish the end of the month report. Hadn't you better get going? Mm, I've got a few minutes yet. Say, have you uh, thought over what I asked you? You can't decide a thing like that in a few hours, Cliff. You know, I got a check today from a fellow that owes me some money. I thought it was a good sign. It'd be enough for a down payment on a house.
you have to get back to work. Jerry will be here in a minute. I wish I didn't have to go out tonight. I'd wait for you. Pete! I've owed him that for a long time. He's unconscious. Do something. You do it. He's all yours. Say, have you seen Cliff? He's late. Yeah, he's gonna be later. Get some water. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Come on. He's all right. He's coming out of it. See, look at the time. He's due out now. He's in no condition to drive. I'll take his reefer out. Cliff can't stand another rap. Cover up for him. Let me talk to Jerry. Hello, Jerry. There's been a bad accident. 
kangaroo, he was killed. Kangaroo? But how? The weeper blew up. I can't talk to you now. I'm coming in. First, I've got to take care of a guy. Hey, I haven't seen you around lately, Cliff. Where you been? Don't you like a coffee anymore? We'll have his job for a thousand bucks a week. Is the thermostat set for zero? Yeah, I checked it. I checked it. Except as I said before, when you're driving one of those reefers full of chemicals like Charlie up there. You checking this rig, push it. Push it, check this rig. Push it, check this rig. Push it, push it, push it, push it, push it, push it. Take a good look. We killed Kangaroo. You killed him? I loaded the gun, but he pulled the trigger. I'll admit this, that he didn't know it was loaded. He was just following me up like he's always done. What are you talking about? You know that acid you turned down for Maxon? Well, I took the job on my own to make a few bucks. Then that kid from the That's right, Janie. Just one more lie. Keep talking, Cliff. I should have been blown up instead of Kangaroo. Pete saved me with a sock in the jaw. Call the police. Tell them I've got a man I want arrested. You better call Mr. Simmons at his house. Get in there. Go on, get in there. Here's the money Maxson gave me. He promised me 250 more when I delivered the acid. Cliff, will you tell me why you needed money so badly that you did the things you did? You broke the law, you... Jerry, Cliff... The same old story. Spending more money than I made. Well, there's nothing more we can do here. It's up to the courts now. Oh, Cliff... It's all right, Janie. I had it coming to me. Pete understands we weren't serious, doesn't he? He knows that you were lonesome while he was out on the road. All right, let's go. Well, goodbye, everybody. Thanks for everything, Jerry. Maybe next time. Don't be a chump, Pete. She's a swell gal. 
You were sure right about him. I don't know about that. He was a much better guy than he was me. Women, how are you gonna figure?